I shall welcome back to the channel. What did I say? What did I tell you guys when I came on this channel talking about this? It only takes the Kings one road game to win, and this series is over. I did not expect this Golden State Warriors team to win a road game before the Sacramento Kings. However, what I said still stands. I believe that the Sacramento Kings are going to get this game seven win. That's my prediction. But let's talk about game six before we get to game seven. So don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe, and let's get straight into the content. You know, as hard as this Sacramento Kings team fought in game four, I truly want to say that this right here was the best game that they've had all series long. That might be a hot take to some people, but I genuinely do believe that them getting it done on both ends of the basketball with the stakes being as high as it is, I believe that this is their best game that they've played collectively as a team. If we want to start off with De'Aaron Fox having one of his best games, when it comes to being very versatile, De'Aaron Fox was giving it to you every single possession on the offensive side of the basketball. 26 points, 11 assists, shot 10 for 18. The man was getting off ball. The man was catching and shooting in the corner. If you need him to set a pick with the bonus, he'll do that. If you need him to run off ball, dribble handoff, he was doing that as well. De'Aaron Fox was everywhere on the offensive side of the basketball. And not to mention, the man's doing this all on a broken finger. His finger is fractured. He taped that bitch up and went right back to work. That is the type of basketball that we need in the NBA, not just in the playoffs, but regularly. And that right there in itself just made me gain so much respect for De'Aaron Fox because the way that he's handled himself ever since getting drafted in 2017 to the Sacramento Kings team, you love to see. You need more of what De'Aaron Fox is doing in basketball right now within other players because he stayed on his own team. He's been there for six seasons in the damn gutter never gave up on this team and he's showing out in the playoffs for a team that hasn't been in the playoffs for 16 seasons that right there is what we need in the nba but getting back to game six i really did believe that fox and curry in this fourth quarter will be having like some sort of duel but it was completely one-sided from the get-go curry he had like a two i think he made a three i don't really remember but after that, he was completely silent, just like game one. The same thing happened in game one that happened in game six. It was actually wild because De'Aaron Fox had his ass clamped up and him and Monk just took them home. He had this man, Steph Curry, in a chokehold for all 12 minutes, bro. It was absolute nasty work from Stephen Curry, but an absolute masterclass for this man, De'Aaron Fox, in the clutch. The reason why he's clutch player of the year, man. I mean, come on. And the reason why I'm putting so much emphasis on this fourth quarter takeover from De'Aaron Fox is because with five minutes left in the game, this man Sabonis decided he wanted to foul out. He was barely playing the game because he was in foul trouble the whole entire game. He only played, I believe, 23 minutes and he had all six fouls. He used every single one of them. Man fouled out. And when talking about Sabonis this series, it irritates me, but it also confuses me at the same time. And the reason why I say that is solely because at the beginning of this game, he was wide open on the three. And I was like, shoot it, Sabonis, shoot it. He shot that bitch and it was wet pause but later on in the game he's wide open on the block in the mid-range doesn't take the shot overthinks it another shot comes his way overthinks it has the ball pump fakes it nobody's nobody's moving the defense is not reacting to that bro they're letting you shoot the shot you already made a three you should have the confidence to take that midi he didn't take it and let's just say hypothetically in game seven the sacramento kings defeat the golden state warriors and they move on to the second round and basically play the los angeles lakers because right now they're up 112 to 74 it's an ass whooping john moran's probably gonna cry i'm sorry bro i'm gonna have to take that shit down it's gotta go down but let's just say hypothetically all that does happen i am nervous for demontis Sabonis because anthony davis as of right now is putting on a defensive clinic he is on a mission to show everybody why he still is a top 10 player in this league and demontis sabonis is looking like food he's looking like food lunch on his table bro and it's kind of scary because the way that demontis sabonis is playing anthony davis will single-handedly take them out of this series so he's either gonna have to step it up or y'all gonna be in cancun renting hotels singing kumbaya it's either one of the two let's just say some good things about demontis Sabonis before we move on to malik monk nobody was crashing the glass like this man sabonis was tonight 
because he was in a dogfight. I understand that Kevon Looney had 13 rebounds. He had more rebounds than him. But this man was taking shot after shot on the floor, laying down, acting his ass off. But then I see the replay. And while they're jumping ball, him and Kevon Looney, that man elbows the hell out of his eye. And his eye is swollen, bro. This man has been taking shots to the ribs, elbows to the eyes. This man has been knocked down on his ass, grabbing rebounds, boxing people out all series. I give so much damn respect to Zabonis, regardless of how bad he has been actually scoring the basketball. He has been extremely impactful on this series when it comes to crashing the glass and the actual grit and competitive edge that he brings to the Sacramento Kings team. Regardless if you guys want to say that he's bad or not, he's still impactful to the winning of the Sacramento Kings team. However, my MVP for this game has been providing more impactful minutes than Sabonis. It's Malik Monk, man. He has been amazing this whole entire series. Actually, not the whole entire series, more like half the series, but he's been really, really good. 28 points, seven rebounds, two blocks, one steal for Malik Monk tonight. There is no way that he's not the player of the game because you can feel the energy and you could feel the aura when he steps onto the court tonight. He led that bench the whole entire game and he wanted this win, man. He wanted to go back to Golden One Center with a W, man. And the one thing that I can say about Malik Monk and De'Aaron Fox is that them two were really the ones who were originally keeping their foot on the Golden State Warriors neck in the third quarter. As people like to say, the third quarter Warriors is the 31st NBA team in the whole entire league and they just shut them up. And not many teams can say that they've done that. And the Sacramento Kings actually can't say that they've done that this whole entire series because that's how the Warriors have been able to close gaps. I believe it was game four, the Sacramento Kings had a lead going into halftime and it was by a significant margin. But all of a sudden, the Golden State Warriors come out and they look absolutely amazing like they normally do in the third quarter. But this go around, none of that happened. And it was solely because of Monk and Fox's play. But I also want to give some shout out to my man Trey Lyles because in the first half, he was making sure that this Sacramento Kings team actually stayed in this game to take the lead. So I do want to give him some credit. And I also want to give him credit. He held down the fort when Sabonis fouled out of the game. So I do want to give him credit for that. I don't really want to say that he was impactful on either side of the basketball. However, he did hold down the fort. So I do give him credit for that. But this series has won exactly how I thought it would go besides the Warriors actually getting a road win before the Sacramento Kings did. I did not think this was going to go seven. I had this going in six. However, I do believe the Kings are going to win in seven. But it's basically been tit for tat with this series, man. The Kings got their asses beat in game three. They come out in game six and they whoop the Golden State Warriors asses. They lost on the road in game five. They had to come back in game six and respond. However, I want to talk about the Golden State Warriors because I think that they are mentally fractured. I think they are. I don't really think any team has been able to do what they are doing in the first round ever, as far as I know. I'm not necessarily saying that the Golden State Warriors are going to lose the series guaranteed, but what I'm saying is they are mentally fractured. That's all I can say. And another thing that I wrote in my notes, bro, Jordan Poole, I cannot fucking stand him. I like Jordan Poole as a player. Don't get me wrong. I like Jordan Poole as a player when he's actually hitting, when he's actually taking good shots, when he's not chucking off of every single goddamn screen that is set for him. I can't do it. I can't do it. He gets the whole throws up a damn shot and it goes everywhere like it's nasty basketball it's disgusting basketball he got his bag and has been looking disgusting man i can't do it i can't do it i can't do it like i'm not a jordan pool hater i'm not a jordan pool hater trust me when i say i'm not a jordan pool hater but get him off my goddamn screen i can't do it no more i can't do it no more but the golden state warriors backs are against the wall i really do want to know what you guys think if the Golden State Warriors do take the W. Um, we were going to talk about the Lakers and Grizzlies tonight, but um, that was an ass beating. That was an ass beating. I do not want to talk mostly about these two teams because I have a lot to talk about in my second round predictions for the Lakers. And I also do have a Memphis Grizzlies what's next video coming for them. So stay tuned for that. But that's all I got for y'all today. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe, share with your friends. And I'm out. Peace.